And welcome to the Wealthy Lala Show. Oh, how are you doing today? I just wanted to give a little shout out if you guys ever are interested in fun coaching sessions with me or if you're able to come in person. I do do different kinds of body work and uh, yeah, other yummy things, raindrops with uh, essential oils. And yeah, if you ever want to know more about that, www.lori.com. Larson, L A U R S E N dot com. Anyways, we are on to Tasty Tuesday. How does it get any better? <laughs> so, for my love of cooking, do you know, I just got to tell you guys one of these things that I, one of the things that I really have become aware of in, um, lately is that um, the more I am present with my life, the more I get like these intuitive hits or I call them like intuitive hits, like God sense, the, you know, awareness, but these intuitive hits that come from where they come from to cook something or to get something ready. And I don't know why yet, like that's the funny thing. And the, the way it's becoming more and more magical that this shows up for me is really, really fun. And, um, and of course, I'm all about finding more places in my life that are fun to have, uh, you know, have more fun. So yeah, so anyway, so last week, um, I got a message from my daughter in law, and she's like, Hey, can you watch the boys tomorrow? And I was like, sure, that sounds like a great idea. So I was gonna get both of our grandsons. And I just said it was anytime after 11. So she, um, they come over, her and my son come over maybe around noon or something, bring the boys and they're going ice fishing. And so in the meantime, I had decided I, you know, from having cooked a turkey, I had boiled the carcass to make uh, broth, the turkey broth. And, um, you know, and I had a bunch of leftover turkey. So I was actually planning to make some turkey soup. So as they're going out the door, I said to them, well, you know, if you guys want, after you're done ice fishing, you're absolutely welcome to, you know, join us for supper. I'll have, I can make enough supper for everybody. And my son goes, oh, for everyone? And I'm like, everyone? Well, who else is everyone? Well, his father-in-law and a sister-in-law and brother-in-law. And I was like, oh. So anyways, they left. They were off in a rush. And then I'm sitting there thinking, I was like, well, you know, I, a, a soup is something that's very easy to expand on. Well, especially when it's like just a pot of a broth soup and you, so you just throw in more turkey or more vegetables or whatever. So anyways, I ha had a minute to sort of sit with it and I'm like, yeah, I can do this. So I threw together this really big pot of turkey soup and then texted them and said, yeah, there's enough for everybody. And so I found out everybody was coming. So I decided to make these scones. And I am not 100% sure where I got this recipe from, who I thought I got it from. I've just discovered I have another scone recipe with that person's name on it. So I'm not sure where this one came from. Um, it may have even been my mom. But anyways, um, it was either my mom or it was an ex-sister-in-law. I'm not sure. But anyways, so this recipe is, it's um, really, it's really easy, works really well, but, it, and it makes fluffy ones. So if you guys like hard scones, then you got to find a different recipe. These make like nice fluffy ones. So you start off with two cups of flour and throw in a teaspoon of baking soda two teaspoons of cream of tartar, um, a teaspoon of sugar, and that's optional. I always put it in. And then what you do is take two heaping tablespoons of shortening. So throw that in. And then I use one of those pastry mixers. I think that's what they're, they're called a pastry mix mixer anyways. And so I mix it right in so that it's all completely all mixed in. You know, it's like a really nice fluffy powder with the, the shortening. Did I say, sure? I hope I said two heaping tablespoons of shortening. I hope I said that. I know I started to. <laughs> so I do distract myself and get squirreled. And so I, 
I sometimes do that, you know, for, you know, it's like the train leaves the station and I need to get on. <laughs> so after I mix all of that together, okay, now you can do one of two things for the, um, the liquid. Uh, you can either buy buttermilk. So the 3.25% is usually what I use. So you can just use the buttermilk from the store or you can take a cup of milk and usually I would say I always use one or two percent. Um, I don't I don't know if I've ever tried it with skim. I think I like to have the fat in it. So I add a taste tablespoon of vinegar into it and then you let it sit for about five minutes and so that creates the milk to sour. And so in the meantime then uh, you can either make this recipe with raisins or with cheese. Now cheese is usually what we do so I will grate myself probably one to two cups of cheese I kind of just see how much I would like to have in it probably a good cup I usually use old cheese use the cheese that you like and uh, yeah so once I kind of get the cheese mixed in there then I throw in well maybe not literally throw in but I pour in the milk the soured milk or buttermilk pour it in I mix it up sometimes now too like I make sure that I add enough liquid so that it is just moist like no longer dry um, not so dry like I don't want it dry because then you know the flour is still it's still got loose flour but what I do is I tried to put just enough moisture in so that when I lay it out onto a board this mixture I lay it out it doesn't stick that much and what I've also started doing is maybe use a little bit of Pam on a cutting board just a tiny bit just to kind of spray it on now I take this mixture out after it's all mixed up just kind of get it right till it's just mixed throw it out onto a cutting board use a knife I kind of flatten it down so it's maybe about half inch to an inch thick and then I cut it into pieces like into squares or triangles or whatever funny odd shape I want to make them into I put them on my cookie sheet which of course has been sprayed with Pam or greased and then pop it into the oven and would you believe I don't actually have a time on here so it's at 375 Celsius or Fahrenheit Celsius no Fahrenheit 375 Fahrenheit see it's confusing because we do our temperatures in Canada in Celsius but our stoves are in Fahrenheit so I get confused sometimes um, you can give me that one <laughs> and I would say that probably what I do is I put them in for about 12 minutes I'm gonna say 12 minutes and I check them and so basically what you want them is done until they are no longer raw and on the inside which I would say is about 12 to 15 minutes sort of depending on how hot your oven was when you put it in there and how it all turns out so what's cool about this recipe is it's been a standby that I've made for years my recipe if you could see it now is a very very dirty and well loved and uh, we usually have it with some kind of soup and they actually stay in the fridge for a few days afterwards I've never tried to freeze them we just either eat them and then if we don't end up eating them then they you know I guess go into the garbage or whatever um, but they're really really good oh, well let's put it this way the way we like to have them after they are cooked is with usually a little bit of butter or margarine whatever your preference is and then your favorite jam because cheese and jam our family likes it <laughs> so and sometimes like I'll make a yellow pepper jelly or we'll have an apple jelly we actually have an apple tree so I've made apple uh, jelly uh, cherry jelly a Saskatoon jam that I got from a neighbor years ago she's passed away now and uh, yeah so that's what I like to do is uh, do something fun like that now you know what is really cool about the more I am present with my life and the more I let myself really um, enjoy it be open to it and like I've I think I mentioned on a previous show that I've been meditating now since the beginning of September I can't, I'm gonna have to look at what date it actually was that I began but it's over 16 weeks now where I've committed to meditating minimum one hour a day um, but when I meditate it's not just about quieting my mind it's actually about coming out of my meditation 
with a sense of gratitude or a love for life. Like I literally am changing the energy in my body and what I desire to create for and with my life to be able to have that. Um, I've actually got the awareness today while I was shoveling a lot of snow because we got a lot of snow over the last couple of days. And that was pretty, it is actually, it's just beautiful. It is beautiful. If you're not a person who likes snow, you won't like it. But I don't mind the snow. I don't mind the cold. Uh, I think it was gorgeous. It was fun. I was out there shoveling. I shoveled for 55 minutes. Now you, you know, maybe you know, people would have appreciation for it too. Um, I've been in the past really sick and um, my body has been really unwell. And up until just recently, um, I'd say the last six months, um, and let's put it this way, uh, to shovel, I shoveled today for 55 minutes, like literally, and the snow in some places because it had drifted was well over a foot. Um, I shoveled for 55 minutes and that is something that I could not have done before. I could not have done it last winter. And that was just, it was like a huge milestone. I have such a sense of gratitude for it. So, you know, maybe for people who've n not had, you know, been afflicted with something that takes them down, um, or had a, yeah, had a situation like that in your world where you couldn't shovel snow, then maybe you'd be like me. And if you were in my situation, you'd be really grateful that you could. Because it is one of the things where I get to see that my life is actually moving forward and creating greater and that an illness doesn't have to be a diagnosis forever, that change is possible, that inspiration is possible, that moving forward is possible. And I am really, truly grateful. I know on yesterday's show, I talked about curiosity and being curious. And that's where being curious has, um, you know, allowed me to create something greater. So, and that's with my body. And that's with having even fun with cooking. Because I got the inspiration to make the pot of soup before I knew all these people were going to come over. And I also ended up having a girlfriend um, a beautiful girlfriend who helped me design my lovely building that I do workshops in. Oh, she just does brilliant, beautiful, gorgeous flowers. It's purely flower on Instagram. Tamara Penna. She does fantastic. Oh my God. Her flowers, her flower arrangements are breathtaking. They, they're all, they just, oh, I just tell you, she's, for me, of all the different flowers that I've seen, um, hers just seriously, just simply take my breath away. And I'm so grateful that I have her in my life and the creativity and the in inspiration that she be. So if you guys find her as purely flower, it could be purely flower events or purely flower on Instagram, but her name is Tamara. Spelt like Tamara, but Tamara Penna, P-E-N-N-A. And so I will remember to put her contact in here. So if you guys want to connect with her, because she, and just follow her, see her beautiful, beautiful stuff. So anyways, how cool is that? So anyway, so the, the, the scone recipe is the recipe of the day. Who knows what magic will be brought for next week? I wonder, but the, like the, the cool thing is, is that with me staying in curiosity, I'm actually not planning these recipes ahead. Life is allowing me, like I'm just sort of living life with the question in my world, I wonder what recipe wants to be on the show this next Tuesday. And then a situation gets in, created and I'm inspired and then it's fun to share. So it's even just the journey of creating the recipe or, or coming to what recipe wants to be shared that is just so incredibly fun for me too. So anyways, you know, if you guys got any really cool recipes, I'd love to hear about them. If you have any questions about me or the show, please, you know, reach out to me at www.laurielarson.com. And I do have 
I'm on Instagram. I am on YouTube. I am on Facebook, people. Find me if you want to. <laughs> so anyways, have an amazing, amazing day. And you know what I just realized? Today's show is airing on January 1st. So happy, happy new year. May you have a beautiful, wonderful, adventurous, fun 2019. Thanks for listening.